Hi Jewish mom. It's been far too long since I made my last pep talk. Um, I think you probably know I was in I was abroad visiting family in North America for a few weeks. I'm so happy to be back with you. Um, and um, so I want to make my pep talk this week. Um, I know, like on the on the blog, I've been talking about the war, the war that's like been forefront in everyone's minds. Um, and I actually want to talk about something different, different that happened to us this week. Um, and uh, so. Um, this past Thursday night, my husband wasn't home, um, and um, uh, and I'm still jet lagged. So I was up at 1:30 in the morning um, with my almost two-year-old Yaakov, um, and all of a sudden I'm in the kitchen, and it's like all of a sudden I look out the window, and it looks like it's pouring rain outside, much like buckets. And I look out the window, it looks like there's like a waterfall coming from the roof of the roof of our house. And um, and I was like, that's really strange because in Israel it does not rain in July, and certainly not like that, not like Mamashek, a downpour like Niagara Falls. So <laughs> so I was like, well, that's strange. So I went to the back of the house um, where we have like you know like I went to the back of the house, looked out the windows in the back of the house, um, and no rain, dry. Israeli summer dry. I was like, uh oh. So I called my husband at 1.30 in the morning. I said, you know, Josh, like, there's like this waterfall coming from the roof of the building. Um, what am I supposed to do? <clears throat> and so Josh wasn't so happy. <laughs> and this is the kind of thing that like, I really, you know, probably, I assume probably in most families, this is the kind of thing that husbands take care of, like major domestic home disasters. Like this is the kind of thing like you want your husband, you know, uh, dealing with that kind of thing. Um, and I've never had to deal with this kind of thing. And so, my, but my husband was at home. Uh, he was very far away elsewhere. So my husband said, well, it looks like the Duchemish, like the solar water heater on the roof of the building. Um, it looks like one of the Duchemishes, it looked like it, like it, ex like it, it sprung a leak or it exploded. Um, so you're gonna have to go and find a neighbor um, to, you know, we have to figure this out. Try and try and wake up a neighbor to help out. Okay. So, um, so I went to, um, so I went to my next door neighbors, um, and um, so I had these. I have the most wonderful neighbors in the world. I have a neighbor named um, Gabby and David. They're a nurse and a doctor, um, and um, so it's like two in the morning. And I have like a baby in my hip. I'm wearing like a raincoat in the middle of like the summer because to come out outside my front door, there's like a waterfall falling down. <laughs> um, and uh, so I said, Gabby, like, um, did you see what's happening here? So of course I will. She does. She's not jet lagged. I woke her up. Um, and so she sees. And I, I said, well, maybe it's maybe it's your duchemish. Maybe it's my duchemish. I don't know. She said. She said, well, we don't have a duchemish. We don't have a duchemish on the roof. Everything that we do is like with gas from the apartment. Um, so God bless my neighbor Gabby. Like she's like I, she said. She said. She said. But I'm gonna find a plumber for you. I'm gonna find a 24-hour plumber. I'm gonna call him right now. At like two in the morning, she did this for me. Okay. So um, so I called Josh back. I said, you know, it doesn't belong to our neighbors. Um, so he said, well, it's, it, so it's either our Duchemesh or our neighbor Modi. So Modi lives above us. We share a roof with him. So I go up to wake up Modi. Dun, 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 dun. Modi's not there. Modi's not there, he must be at his parents' house. <sighs> so I come back down, I call up Josh, um, and, um, and um, I'm sorry, by then Gabby had, Gabby had gotten in touch with the plumber. The plumber said, there's nothing a plumber can do in the middle of the night. You just have to turn off the main water thing. And I'm like, okay, like I don't even know where the water things are. So I, so I called Josh back, um, and, um, and he said, he said, Jenny, he said, okay, you're going to have to find the main water thing. He said, go and find it, and you have to do this. Then he gave me like a few instructions. He explained to me where the water things are, uh, to turn off the water for the house, um, and for all, of the, for all of our apartment complex. Um, and um, he said, he said, call me back. And I will confess that at that moment, I thought, I'm not dealing with this. I'm a woman. I'm a Jewish man. This isn't fair. I shouldn't have to be dealing with this. 
this isn't, I'm just gonna like leave it and just let this go the whole night. I'm not gonna deal with this. This is not my responsibility. I shouldn't have to deal with this. Okay? Um, so <laughs> much I considered for like an entire minute. So like I was just gonna let like the water, I was just gonna go back to sleep. I was just too tired to deal with this. It was just too unfair. Um, but then I have, you know, have, I, 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 got, I got a hold of myself, and I've been reading a lot of my, my favorite book in the whole world, Gates, Gates of Gratitude, by Rav Shalom Arush. And, you know, I read, I read five minutes a day. It's much, it's, it's something that, like, keeps me sane, that book. I highly recommend it. And, um, and so, like, I just sort of, I sort of, like, took a deep breath, and I thought, Hashem, everything is free, everything is from you, everything that happens is from you, and everything is for the best. There must be, Hashem, you love me so much, and you know that my husband's away, and there must be some good reason why, of all the nights of the year, this had to happen right now. Um, and also, I thought of, you know, all the mothers around Israel who are, like, you know, dealing with sirens in the middle of the night and having to run with their children to bomb shelters and things like that. And I thought, I thought you know, this is relatively minor. Okay, I can deal with this. I can deal with this. I can do it. I can do it. So I went outside to follow Josh's instructions. I actually found the water things um, and um, was trying to like turn them off. Da, da, da. In the end, I called Josh back and we spent an hour on the phone together trying to determine who had, like, which apartment had the leak. Of course, it was us. So in the middle of the night, I'm trying to, like, with this baby on my hip, turning off and turning on and trying to determine da, 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 and trying to do it like and the water wasn't turning on, the water was turning on from 2 to 3 in the morning. So by 3 in the morning, I had done it. I had figured it out. I figured out how to turn off the water. I had figured out that it was our water. Um, and I managed, to, I managed to stop the leak, to stop the waterfall from the top of the building. Um, and um, the amazing thing was just like at 3 in the morning, like what a sweet feeling of accomplishment. Like when, when I felt like, wow, I did it. And I never thought I could do it. And I actually did it. Okay. So, um, so, and in the end, Baruch Hashem, the next morning, I got, a re I got a recommendation for an excellent, excellent plumber, and he came right away, and it was a very simple repair. So, end of story. I hope end of story. Seems like that was the end of the story. Okay, so the next morning, um, next afternoon, it's right before Shabbat, and I saw my neighbors, uh, David and Gabby, and um, they were like, so, so I knocked on the door, so I said, I want to thank Gabby. I said, Gabby, you were amazing last night. You were amazing. I said, two in the morning, and you get up, and you, and you call, and you're like looking through the yellow pages, whatever, to find a 24-hour plumber from you. I mean, you are amazing. Thank you so much. And the amazing, the, 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 what really got to me is then her husband, her husband is a very, very impressive person, a wonderful person, very impressive. He, like, he's, he's in a, he's, he, runs, he runs an entire department at Hadassah Hospital. Um, so he's a very wonderful neighbor with a bunch of kids. He's a very wonderful neighbor to, to share a wall with. And um, this department had at Hadassah in case anyone gets sick or whatever, that we know we have this doctor next door. And he's also a wonderful person, but he looks at me with this newfound respect in his eyes. And he says to me, he, sa he says, I heard that you were a Gibua. I heard that you were a hero last night. And I was like, oh. He said, I heard that you dealt with this all on your own. And I was like, oh, it's true, I did. So <laughs> the thing was that what really struck me about that comment was so my so no one knows what I did. I mean now I guess all of you know what I did, but like no one knew. Like I had done basically really been for me an act of heroism. My instinct, my impulse was just to say, I'm not dealing with this. This is not fair. I'm a woman. I'm a Jewish mom. I change diapers, I cook, I pay the bills, or whatever I do. I don't deal with major domestic disasters. That is my husband has to do with that. A plumber has to do with that. You know, someone has to do with it, not me. It's not fair. And that moment, just in the middle of the night, and being like, okay, no, Hashem, you love me. There's a reason you're putting this into my lap. And I'm taking care of it. And I took care of it. I actually did it my own. I figured out how to turn off the water and how to deal with it. And, um, and just, but just seeing the look in my neighbor's eyes, that look of respect, and that look of like, wow, you are a giboah. 
and it occurred to me just like so but like no one knows as I said like no one really saw what I did like so no one saw it my husband knows and who else knows you guys know and my two neighbors right and it occurred to me like how most of the things we do there's you know like there's like one witness or two witnesses or no witnesses knows the most heroic acts that we do as Jewish moms the most heroic acts of our lives you know like it's the middle of summer vacation like the kids all around and summer vacation is getting pretty long you know uh, for a lot of us and you know what it takes what it takes like the heroism it takes to bite your tongue when you're getting fed up with this one or that one or that one with your husband or your kids or the extended relative who's visiting or that you're visiting right the the, the heroism it takes to really to do the right thing um, Rabbi Niven he tells us a lot about the Der Hashem. That the Der Hashem writes about. Um, he writes. He writes about that the that the greatest pleasure, that the most ecstatic feeling a person can access in life, is a feeling of that of making the right decision, of at that moment of deciding. Okay, I am going to do the right thing, and it's hard, and I have to bite my tongue, and I really want to scream at this person, or yell at this kid, or just run away. You know, run away from this thing that I, that I, that I, which is my, which, which is actually my responsibility. You know, it's so easy. Like we want to like run away from the right thing, but when we actually do the right thing, and you know it, and accessing that feeling of intense, intense pleasure. You know, okay, today I took my next step in Avodat Hashem. Today I took my next step in doing the right thing to serve Hashem. Okay, and I think it's something that you need to work on. You need to like a little bit feel like to access, like to feel the pleasure of like seeing like in the, the look in my neighbor's eyes. Like that pleasure of feeling like, ah, you know, look at that. Like I earned his respect. And just thinking of, you know, so most of the time my neighbor's not there or, but like knowing that, you know, in, in our own lives that, that Hashem is there, that Hashem is watching us, that Hashem is getting so much nachat from us and from, the, from, from us when we make the right decision, no matter how hard it might be. And also how, and it, let, let's say it backfires. Let's say, let's, let's say that you bite your tongue and that, you know, five minutes, any, five minutes later that you, yell at, that you yell at your mother anyway, okay? Or you yell at your child anyway or whatever, okay? But um, even if it backfires, at that moment that you made the right decision, that you were a gibua, <laughs> okay? So I want to bless all of us, Jewish moms. First, I want to bless all of us. We should see a lot of quiet and shalom in all of Eretz Israel uh, for all of us and for the whole world, um, that we, Arabs and Jews and everyone, that we should experience a lot of peace here, okay? Um, and secondly, I want to bless us that we should feel, that we should be able to access this feeling of intense pleasure, the intense pleasure of doing the right thing, of at that hard moment, that hard moment, taking responsibility and doing the right thing. And it's not easy, but you know when you do it, when you do it, when you do the heroic thing, when you take your next step in Avodah Hashem, when you take your next step in Avodah Hashem and serve in Hashem, then, um, then, uh, then, then the derch, the derch, I'm sorry, the Der Chaim teaches that it's the most, it can be the most, the, the closest thing to ecstasy that we can possibly experience in this life. And bless all of you, Jewish moms, with an amazing, amazing week.